Okay, so this is the CNC design and cutting overview chart that I made. As you can see, it's pretty simple. You, you start by making a part. Uh, you, do, you, you think it up and then you put it in the computer into a 2D or 3D CAD program. Then you take your design and you put it into a CAM program and then you get your instruction code for the machine. Then you move to the cutting process. So this is the design overview just blown up. Uh, and this is what we're going to be focusing on in this video, part two. So this is Autodesk Inventor, just a little intro to it. Um, I have all the features here. You can make incredible parts. Uh, it's a very expensive program, so you're not going to be able to buy it outright. But if you're a student at a college or a high school, you can get a student version of it. Um, that's what I have. Now, uh, if you are not a student, then you have to go and find another CAD suite that that is uh, that's cost a lot less than Inventor. There's a lot of them out there. Um, there's some versions of SolidWorks Student that you might be able to get, um, but I wouldn't say if you're not really a student then you got to buy uh, an outright CAD suite. But there's uh, yeah, there's Alibur, um, Autodesk, and a couple others. Uh, a lot of 2D CAD, too. I would say that a, a lower-end CAD, uh, CAD system would be like between 75 and 200. But they're all pretty capable. Uh, especially 2D. I mean, you'll see later on, I use 2D DXFs and CAMBAM. So, I mean, you look at this right now, that's 2D. That's just 2D lines. If you don't need a 3D program, I just prefer to do it in 3D first, then move into 2D because I like I, I visualize with the 3D. So this is a 2D um, 2D picture 2D uh, area of something that we're going to be making later on in the video. So um, these are all lines, and each line you can select. There's uh, they're called polylines, and you can select them. Now you select a polyline or multiple polylines, and then you go to the top, and there's a menu called machining operations. Now this menu allows you to do things with those lines. If you select profile at the very top, it basically tells the machine to cut along the line. Think of it as uh, like a saw blade it, or, or a band saw blade it'll come in and it'll cut exactly where that line is and you can tell it how deep you want it to cut and uh, how how deep you want it to take off in each pass a lot of different things now profile I would say is the most used one now right underneath profile you saw there was something called pocket pocket is when used when you think or when you're gonna make like a depression say there was a board a board much bigger than this circle and I wanted to make uh, say I, I had a half inch thick board and I wanted to make a quarter inch thick circle uh, a quarter inch deep circle I could pocket it and what that would do is it would go pass by pass and it would remove a layer and layer and layer of the circle so this is a glass cup um, that I wanted to make a cup holder for as an example you see it's about, I'd say, three inches in this picture, and six inches was the diameter I wanted to use, but I ended up using eight inches. So the cup is uh, three, a little over three inches in diameter, but I went with slightly more than its real diameter so that the cup would fit in with a little bit of swing. And then I also made sure that I knew how deep to make the depression for the cup. Three-eighths of an inch was what I chose. So here I go with Inventor, and I'm going to take those dimensions I just got and turn them into a 3D model. I go and I open up a part, make a circle. I'm going to make the circle 8 inches, 8 inches in diameter, and then I'm going to extrude it. Inventor is sketch-based, so you make an extrusion, then you do something to that extrusion, and you basically cut away from a hole. A lot of different ways to do things. Then I'm going to make a new sketch on top of that new solid, and I'm going to make a circle of the diameter of the cup holder that I want, which is going to be 3.125. Then I'm going to cut that down, yeah, I made it an eighth of an inch, it has to be three eighths, let me go fix that. You can just change things. Um, 
then I'm going to make a new sketch and I'm going to make some text in big letters. So I click there and I'm going to make a ring where I want the letters to uh, I want the letters to wrap around this ring which is I believe 4 inches. Um, okay. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to make the text. Type in YouTube is the first piece of text I want to make. I'm going to change its size to one half inches. Now I have letters printed on the surface in the sketch. They're not actually there physically yet, but you'll see what I do next. And then I add 2011 um, in a slightly smaller font. So it says YouTube 2011. Yeah, I kind of forgot what to do. Whoops. All right, I think I got it now. So give me a second here. A little bit more, not quite lined up perfectly, but change it just a little bit. There we go. Finish that sketch. So now we have the things printed on there, but they're not real yet. So uh, if I go to extrude and I cut them in, I'm going to cut them in an eighth inch deep. And now we have a coaster with the letters engraved in it. The next step is going to be uh, pan around it so you can see. The next step is I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say export DXF. Now other CAD programs you'll be able to export the DXF somehow but in this one I can export just this face or I can do it another way but I don't need to do it that way for this video. For these purposes I just exported this one face. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to load up Kanban. So here's Kanban. Um, I'm going to go and I'm going to open up the DXF that I just uh, that I just got or exported from Inventor. So go ahead there and open it up. I'm going to take a look at it. You can pan around the 2D uh, the 2D sketch and see what see what's in it. Um, the, z, uh, the blue line is the z-axis. Now, on the left, notice all these weird lines, all the splines. You really have to get rid of the splines. So the way I've learned to do this over time is you go and you select all the splines. Um, and you simply you, you shift and you select all of them. And then you hit uh, control, control P and that will convert them to polylines. Not quite done yet, but now we have all polylines and a few circles in there and there's no um, splines. Next select everything and then hit control J and you will get a menu asking you to join them. Now type in a join tolerance. I usually use a hundredth of an inch. Um, and you know, Don't use a zero because it doesn't work a lot. So now we have all those little polylines, and you can notice there's a lot less lines. Each letter is its own line, and then the two circles. So that's all we have. So I'm going to go and make a profile, or a, a pocket first, with that inner circle. I'm going to call it uh, uh, Drink Hole. And um, I'm going to set the depth to 0 0.12, and then the, or the target depth to negative. Uh, well, that's wrong. It's going to be. Going to be three three eighths of an inch. Hang on. Um, anyway, th this is this is uh, part or this is what it'll look like after you generate the tool pass. But let me set that to point three seven five, and then regenerate the tool pass. So now you can see what it should properly look like. Really, that that machining operation only took me a few minutes to set up. I just clicked, uh, you know, the line pocket, and then I went to basic, typed in a few values, and voila, you see that. Um, now I'm just selecting all of the uh, letters and numbers, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to say profile. Now be very careful with profile because there's a setting at the top that is incredibly important. It's called inside or outside. You need to know exactly when to use which type. Outside is when you want to cut something out. So I'll use outside when I cut the big circle. But you want to use inside right here cutting the letters because if you use outside it's going to cut around the letters. If you use inside it will cut on the inside perimeter of the letters. 
So I'm going to set the uh, depth increment to an eighth of an inch and the target depth to an eighth of an inch. So it's just going to engrave these letters an eighth inch deep. Also set the tool diameter, that's pretty important. It tells it how, how large the end mill bit is. So now we have, uh, now we're about halfway done with it. Oh, kind of kind of messed it up there. Got to get back to the top. Uh, okay, almost got it. Oh. Kind of gets confusing sometimes. All right, now we're back to normal. So then we finally click the outer circle. Then we go to profile. And now here, unlike the, uh, the letters, when we go to the profile, we have to select outside because when this cuts it uh, outside, it's going to cut the whole part out. If you were to do inside, it would be, I believe, seven and seven and three quarters of an inch because the bit's an eighth inch. But if you do it outside, you'll get the perfect eight inch circle, which is what we want. So I'm going to set the uh, depth increment to 0.12 and then the uh, target depth to negative 0.75. Now, don't just trust what when you go to get wood at the store because it's usually not three quarters of an inch, even though it says it. Make sure you measure it with a caliper and then compensate for that. Um, you can always make it go deeper into the wood if it's if you don't know just overshoot by like a couple hundreds of an inch and it'll cut right through just have something underneath of it so you don't uh, cut into the machine so I'm doing holding tabs right now now these are very important you gotta understand that once the parts cut out there's nothing holding it on and that's very bad because then the bit can touch the part and when the part and the bit start banging against each other it'll just chew the thing and then you'll get a really bad finish so by setting the holding tabs I set it to a minimum of four a max of eight and I set automatic square tabs uh, by a tenth of an inch square and then you click generate so now on top of the regular tool pass I made now it's generated these small little feet and these will hold the piece in so when it's finished cutting and it makes that one last pass, there's going to be eight little tiny wooden uh, rectangular or square little pegs holding the thing to the stock. Then when you're finally done and you pull the thing out of the machine, all you have to do is break and then sand where those little things would be, and you'd never know. So I'm going to go here, and you go up to the top. Make sure you click on Part, not the individual machining operation. Right-click say generate G code and I have a network folder on my uh, CNC machine so I'm just gonna open that up and I'm gonna save it as uh, whatever file name but I'm gonna save this as coaster G code export and I'm gonna click save and that concludes the exporting of the G code so uh, this is the end of part two and uh, what you're seeing in the picture right there is what I finished making in part three which is where we take the G code and turn it into a real thing so uh, please uh, rate comment and subscribe and go to part three